There's a developing problem in the film industry today, and it centers around intellectual property, or IP. In a well-crafted essay over on the Nerdwriter channel, the video details how Disney began as an IP-based company. Now for most of us, the authoritative source for fairy tales is Walt Disney. And that's no accident. Disney set out to claim that authority when he made films like Snow White, Cinderella, or Sleeping Beauty by adapting folk tales in the public domain and copywriting the adaptations. He made the transition from print to cinema as smooth as possible for the audience, even going so far as to begin his movies with the opening of a book. Disney was smart. His films are now regarded as classics. From its humble beginnings with Disney, IP has grown into a behemoth of the film industry. That's why audiences are inundated with cinematic universes and constant and often unnecessary reboots. It's why actors are asked to sign multi-picture deals, often before they've even won the role. But this need for intellectual property, franchises, and sequels comes with a heavy price. Mark Duplass points out the issue in his 2015 South by Southwest talk. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, the bad news and the good news of independent film. And and you know if you're at all like me and you read the trades and you're involved in film conversations, it's mostly bad news. I think that what we hear about is the death of the middle class of independent films. You know where are those cool five million dollar movies that used to break out of Sundance in, in 1998 and, and, and why are they not buying those or making those or even when they do, why are they not promoting them and, uh, and why is nobody going to see them? Duplass goes on to point out that this conundrum is not as a result of the price of equipment. And he's right. For a modest 2500, you can shoot pretty good 4K images. For those unfamiliar with the resolution, DVDs have a resolution of 720 by 480. 1080 by 1920 pixels is pretty much the standard for Blu-ray, and 4K is four of those put together. This obviously doesn't cover everything, sound, lighting, permits, cast and crew, but for 2500 it's a good start. So filmmaking is not inherently a pastime for the rich and famous. But the problems of intellectual property haven't just affected indie filmmakers, either. Just look at Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. In an interview discussing the future of cinema, Spielberg said, Lincoln came this close to being an HBO movie instead of a theatrical release. And Lucas pointed out, we're talking Lincoln and Red Tails. We barely got them into theaters. You're talking about Steven Spielberg and George Lucas can't get their movies into a theater. So why now? If intellectual property really started or came to prominence with Disney, why is it all of a sudden a problem? Well, the number of films that actually make a significant amount of money is quite small at the start. In school, we were taught that only about five to seven movies a year might make significant financial gains in cinemas and during a recession that number is bound to go down. Thus, distribution companies are always looking for a guaranteed proven market, and that's what sequels and franchises come with. As a result, they have fewer funds for independent projects, and if you listen to Frank Smith of Walden Media's TED Talk, that's almost exactly what he details. Now, I know this firsthand because in the entertainment industry we've gone through a lot of changes. And the company that I run is a film production company. Now, the difference between a film production company and a studio is we make the film, right? And then we partner with the studio to get it to the theaters, to get it on television, to get it onto home video. Well, in 2008, we had an economic meltdown in this country. All of a sudden, box office revenues started to go down. And the studios now, no more privately held, but all publicly traded, reacted very quickly. And what they did was, they said, okay, let's cut down production, let's release less films. So the studios went from doing 25, 26 films each a year down to eight or 10 films. Now, and I had to make a quick decision. How can my company continue to flourish and be viable? It meant going to the studios and saying to them, instead of us spending money and developing our films and bringing them to you, 
why don't you show me of the six films you're releasing this year, which ones you think are a good fit for a family and brand like ours, and let's partner with you. We'll help you create the vision, and we'll invest in your films. Intellectual property is essentially a risk management technique, but when it comes to who actually owns the IPs, young independent filmmakers may be at somewhat of a disadvantage. As a result, indie cinemas may be reaching a critical point in its history. Because change creates opportunity, right? You want to make you move into TV, because as the death of the middle class of film has happened, it has been rebirthed in television. Having just finished talking about indie cinema and intellectual property, it's not lost on me that I am decked out in one of my top five favorite IPs. Ninja Turtles is number one, no matter how terrible the movies are at the moment. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe. Thanks.